We will construct an angle of 60 degrees just using a compass and straight edge. So we are given the line segment BC. We want to find a point A such that angle ABC is 60 degrees. Now to find that point A, we put our compass point at B, open the compass to a radius BC and draw an arc centered at B with radius BC. Next, with the same setting on the compass, we put the compass point at C and draw a second arc through B which has the same radius as the first arc, of course, radius of BC. Where the arcs intersect, we connect to B, and this angle is 60 degrees. So why is this angle 60 degrees? Well, you can see by construction that the distance of B to A is equal to the distance of B to C, because they're both radii of this circular arc here. Also by construction, the distance of C to B equals the distance of C to A, because these two lines are both radii of this circular arc over here. So this arc, this line has the same length as this line. So this equals this, and this in turn equals this. So the three lines are the same. So we have an equilateral triangle. The three sides are the same. The three angles are the same. Also, the three angles add up to 180. So three equal angles that add up to 180 means that each angle is 60 degrees. A, B, and CD are chords of a circle that intersect externally at E as shown. Name two similar triangles in the diagram above. Let's look at angles that are the same. Well, these two angles are the same because they stand on the same arc. Okay, that's a theorem that we proved previously. So I'll call this one 1 and this angle 2. So they're both the same. Of course, you can name them using these points. You could call angle 1 BAD, for example, and angle 2 BCD. This angle here, which I'm calling 3, is equal to this angle here, which I'm calling 4, because these are opposite angles. You, again, you can use um, these points to name this angle. So, well, you'd have to give a name to this corner. So, you know, you could call this X, for example. So you could say AXB equals CXD. So now we've found two similar triangles, because these two angles are the same in both of these triangles. So this triangle is similar to this triangle here. We don't have to worry about the third angle, because the third angle um, is automatically going to equal, be the same in both triangles, because the three angles add up to 180. However, we're going to look at another pair of similar triangles that will come into the second part of this question. We are going to look at these two triangles, this triangle here and this one here. We're going to show that they're similar. So I've drawn both triangles down here. Now, notice that the angle E is the same in both triangles. The angle at E is where both triangles overlap. So these two angles are the same. So this is the common angle of both triangles. So that proves that both of these triangles are similar. Two angles are the same. Well, the third angle is automatically the same in both triangles. Next, we will prove that EA times EB equals EC times ED. So, referring to this diagram here, if we multiply EA by EB, we'll get the same result if we multiply EC by ED. Let's look at sides EA and EC. We see that they're opposite the same angle in both triangles, so that means that they're corresponding sides in both triangles. We're going to take the ratio of these two sides. So let's start with this triangle. I'll take EA in this triangle and divide by its corresponding side EC in, in the second triangle. So that's the ratio of corresponding sides. And we know from a theorem that that's the same, that ratio is the same for all corresponding sides. So you see we want to bring ED and uh, EB into this. You can see that ED is opposite this angle here. E EB is opposite this angle here. So they're a pair of corresponding sides. So we start with this triangle and we see that this ratio must equal ED divided by the corresponding side in the other triangle, which is EB. So 
So I'll just note here corresponding sides, meaning corresponding sides of similar triangles are in the same ratio. Um, of course we have another pair of corresponding sides here, opposite this blue angle, and they're in the same ratio. So in other words, if we take AD and divide by CB, it'll equal both of these. Now we don't need to use that pair of corresponding sides. To get our result, as you can see, we just cross multiply. Next we are given that EB is 6.25, ED is 5.94, CB is 10. Okay, we want to find AD, so let's get a pair of corresponding sides, well, they're the sides in red. So let's start with this triangle, 5.94 divided by its corresponding side in the other triangle, at 6.25, must equal the blue side in this triangle that we're looking for, which is AD divided by its corresponding side in the other triangle, which is 10. So all we do to find AD is multiply both sides by 10. So we multiply 10 by this thing. We get 9.504. Triangle ABC is right angled at the point C. S has diameter AC. T has diameter CB. So we want to see how to draw this circle here. Well, its diameter is AB, so obviously we just get the midpoint of this diameter. Now, because this angle is 90 degrees, our circle will pass through the point C. That's because the angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. That just follows on from an earlier theorem that we proved that states that the angle at the center of a circle is twice the angle at the circle, where both of these angles stand on the same arc. Okay, so here's the arc. Well, the arc is a semicircle, so this angle, as you can see, is also a straight angle. So this angle is half of it, which is 90. Prove that in any right-angled triangle ABC, the area of the circle U, that's the circle on the diameter, equals the sum of the areas of the circles S and T. That's the two circles whose diameters are the short sides of the right-angled triangle. Let's assume that this is true. So how do we get the area of circle U? Well, the area of any circle is pi times the radius squared. So what's the radius of this circle? Well, the diameter is AB, so the radius is half the diameter, or AB over 2. Similarly for the area of the other two circles. The radius of circle S is AC divided by 2. The radius of circle T is BC divided by 2. Now, is this statement true? Well, we can divide all the way across by pi. We can also multiply all the way across by 4. See, we get a 4 in the denominators, and we end up with this thing. Is this true? Well, this is just Pythagoras' theorem. We have a right angle triangle here. It says that the longest side squared, AB squared, is the sum of the squares of the two short sides. So if this thing is true, and we reverse the steps, we end up showing that the area of the circle on the hypotenuse is the sum of the areas of the circles on the two short sides. The diagram shows the right angled triangle ABC and arcs of the circles S, T and U. So we're interested in this shaded area. These two shaded area are, areas are called loons. So we want to prove that the sum of the areas, that is A1 plus A2, the areas of the two loons, is equal to the area of the right angle triangle ABC. Well, I've indicated these regions, A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. Half the area of U is just A3 plus A4 plus A5. Okay, so I'm using what we proved earlier, that the area of circle U is the sum of the areas of the two smaller circles. And I just take half on both sides, because we're interested in half of those areas. So half the area of circle S is just A1 plus A5. And we want half the area of circle T, well that's just A2 plus A3. So now we have the result. A4 is the area of triangle ABC, and we're, we've shown it's equal to A1 plus A2, that's 